And that's the bottom line. Just stone go set. Are you ready? You're listening to the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast. Hey yo, oh, yeah. with your host Kenny Killer and the Galdon Sugar Show. Hello everyone and welcome to the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast. It is episode 41. It's the first episode of 2014. It's the evolution of the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast and it is I, the man of the hour, too sweet to be sour, the one man with no Instagram, Kenny Killer. And you know, I'm always kicking it with the hashtag tech guy, the Welsh wizard, the Gaudio Sugar Shugs. Yo, 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 yo. Yo, and we have the return, and I'm going to mention this, like Dave Peltzler, the WCW announcer, it is the return of Steve Dawson! And the crowd goes mild. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Had a good Christmas. Um, I got, got a bit of flu, but I'm seem to be getting over the worst of it now, so it's all good. Got that lurky going. Yeah, <laughs> it's all good though, man. We're glad to have you back, man. What you been doing? Um, had a few weeks at work. Got got a Christmas job at ASDA. They worked me to the bone. I did about fifty six hours over the course of six days. That was quite nice. Um, yeah. Um, since um, Christmas Eve, I've had this flu thing and just tri- been trying to fight that off. Really, herbal remedies. Herbal remedies. Herbal remedies. <laughs> I'll tell you what. My mum used to do. Yeah, um, just weed. Put some weed in a, in a in a rum in a rum bottle. It's all good. <laughs> That's something to try out. Burn your chest. It'll burn it. Sweat it right out, bruv. <laughs> oh god. Um, Shugs, are you doing? 2014, baby. I'm alright, man. I'm just relaxing. You know me. Back to work tomorrow after two weeks off. So. <coughs> yeah, yeah. You've de- had an ex- extra week more than most of us. You're back. Yeah, the depression's starting to slip in. Oh, man, don't worry, man. I'm sure Jason got you, dog. Mm. <laughs> um, so, football news? Any any football news? Nah, mate, the weather, yeah. mate. There's no football in Wales. Do you, do you see the fucking weather? <laughs> yeah. Unless yeah. we started playing water polo, you know, <laughs> we were we weren't getting any games in. Um, what's it like in London, Steve? Um, it hasn't been too bad, actually. It's quite quite bright today, but I think we've, we've um, avoided the worst of all the flooding you've seen on the news. Oh, that's all right. Oh, uh, which yeah, it's bad down there though, man. Um, south south side, not good, not good at all. Um, all right. So enough about the weather. Let's talk WWE. Now, people, Twitter fans out there, please make sure you follow us on Twitter. That's at Sunday Segway. Segway spelled S E G U E, not the Sunday Seg. It's the Sunday Segway. Um, email us also, uh, Sunday Segway at gmail dot com. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Listen to our old episodes on iTunes, The Great Podomatic, and please don't forget to download the <coughs> Double Twist Player Player. So, shout outs. Oh, actually, before the shout outs, just like to mention, we were meant to have um, Nick McGee on the show today from the Pro Wrestling Smart Talk, uh, but he is snowed in. So he cannot go anywhere. He is stuck on his drive in Michigan, in the United States, so he will be with us next week. And I am happy to announce that Kenny Killer and Shugs and Sunday Segway have agreed a partnership with the editor and founder, Nick McGee of Pro Wrestling Smart Talk, to now be the newscaster, the news reader, um, giving us all the lowdown on WWE news backstage and TNA and ROH once a month. So he will be the Dave Meltzer of the team. So he is now called Nick Meltzer McGee, and he will be here next week to give us the lowdown, backstage lowdown on WWE, TNA, and ROH. This replaces the Deadly Dirt Sheets. It shall now be called Smart Talk Report. Okay? Holla at your boys. So, shout outs. Let's see who has been adding us. We've had loads of people um, following us recently, which is great. Um, so let's just have a look. See all these, these beautiful people out there following the show. Okay, so 
give a shout out to Monster Mac Show, also at FSN now. Thank you, Sammy WW97. She also loves JLS, but Bun JLS, sorry. Um, Rebecca Hawkins, that's Becca Hawkins123, at Levelers Low, uh, at Hill Tony B11, also at WWE underscore facts. Uh, and lastly, but not least, at that Roxy girl. She just joined us recently. She's a now an honourable seg head, so I'll give you a mention, girl. That's at that Roxy girl, okay? Now, before we go into Raw, I just got to give a shout out to James Powers, okay? Because this guy has not only taken over the message board, he has been getting other people to message on the message board. So, I have to thank you, brother, and I'm going to announce right now, me and Shugs would like to offer you the chance to be part of the team per- permanently as uh, making sure that you take care of the message board. That's your job, homie. You are now part of the team. Should you got anything to say? Um, anyone's better than me doing it. <laughs> so you are now part of the Sunday Segway team, James. Hope you'll be listening to this, getting excited and shit. So you're part of the team now. You are now uh, managing the message board, my friend. So how at your boys. Um, uh, sorry, Steve, any, any shout-outs? Um, don't think so. No. No. Okay. It's actually boring. <laughs> it's good, bro. <laughs> right. Let's get into New Year's Eve Raw. We didn't know what to expect. Um, well, we did know we was going to expect Brock Lesnar because they decided to leak that a bit early. But let's go into segment one. CM Punk promo. So, Raw starts off. CM Punk, you know, talking about his 2013. Uh, Shugs, what did you think of his promo? Um... Yeah, he just, you know, I'm, it's slightly more serious than he's been the last few weeks, I suppose. He he did a bit of banter, like he's been doing, you know, where he's been in his alternate universe. <coughs> but he actually tried to get serious pretty early, you know, and start talking about the Shield, start calling their mates, start trying to, you know, get a bit of dissension uh, in between these three. So, yeah, and I thought it was better than it has been. Seems like he's getting back into... You know, being a, someone of relevance, really. Yeah. Yeah, because we all know he's been, you know, shouting out backstage that he's been frustrated and stuff with travelling and all that. Um, and his position's been kind of, you know, up and down with the people he's been facing. Um, but you know, Punk, like you said, Punk started messing around with the Shield. Um, Steve, like, how surprised were you when he blatantly said Roman Reigns was basically getting pushed? Um, I wasn't surprised much, really, because that, cause that's really what's going to happen if you believe all the dirt sheets. If you believe, um, that's what um, Roman Reigns is apparently going to get the mega push. And um, I think Ambrose and old Rollins are going to be stuck in the mid card for a bit longer. Yeah? Okay. Um, well, all right. So let's ask you the question then, Steve. Okay, seeing as CM Punk asked the question to the guys, who is the best right now in the Shield? I think Reigns has the best chance of being a star. I think the best wrestler is probably um, um, Rollins, and um, the best sort of like character, sort of like charisma character-wise, is probably Ambrose. So they've all got their niche that they could go with if 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 Vince decides to give them a push. But um, at the moment, I think I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with Reigns. Yeah, that's definitely going to be interesting. Um, this match, um, sorry, this segment led on to segment two, which was um, <coughs> CM Punk basically saying, you know, who's the best? Rawlins said he was. Maddox comes out. Where has he been? Um, and then says, you know, Rawlins, he's going to be facing Punk. So, um, Shugs, another good performance by Rawlins, man, you have to say. Uh, yeah, um, I don't think it was as good as his match was seen on SmackDown. But, you know, it was a really good match. Um, He seems to have been the one that has benefited most from, like, uh, being in the Shield, you know, because he was a bit bland when he was on NXT. And obviously the other two guys came in pretty new. Um, But he is the one who's, like, I think he's improved the most, you know, in terms of, like, maybe, like, star power, you know, because, like, Roman Reigns is still a bit green, if you ask me. You know, he's not the most put-together wrestler, but this guy is probably the one they may be least expected to be really good. And he's just come on, and he's just having... He has all the big spots, doesn't he, really, and has all the great 
and spends the most time in the ring more than the rest of the Shield. All right, so with Rollins now, yeah, can we see him getting Ziggler? Um, in terms of being able to wrestle, you know, um, with a broomstick but not getting anywhere. Um, I don't know. It just depends on how he plays it, you know, because we still don't really know what Ziggler's done to actually be in the place he is now. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It could be anything because he looked like he was, you know, going to go to the top. Looked like he was going to be really good, and now he's just, <coughs> now he's just floundering. You know, he's just being nowhere. So, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see when they do eventually split up, what happens to him. Because there's three people, so there's a lot of um, places to put, you know, places. If if Reigns is going to the top and then Ambrose is going to be mid-card, then maybe he's going to be the one that's forgotten about. You never know. Steve, uh, what did you think of, um, you know, the the first kind of, Book, the, the, the beginning of the show, the booking of the beginning of the show, how how um, well do you think that was booked? Um, yeah, I think, um, well, so, starting off new, and first Raw of the New Year, yeah, and you can't, can't go wrong with a, with a punk promo, and then um, following up with, um, with Seth Rollins versus Punk, I thought it was a really good match, but um, did, you, did you guys see on Twitter, and Punk um, actually said on Twitter he thought this match was garbage, I don't know what... I was trying to watch it and trying to work out what he thought was garbage, but I thought it was a pretty good match. I don't know. I think he was being a bit too hard on himself there. Yeah, no, I saw the Twitter, um, you know, his um, Twitter state. It's like, I just, but I, I, I couldn't understand either. I was trying to look out, you know, look as well, and I just, yeah, I don't know. I thought it was re- I thought it was good. Obviously, the Cena one was better, but I thought it, I thought it was good. Cheers? Um, Yeah, you know, I thought it was, I thought it was decent. Maybe you know, there was, like, a missed spot in there, or maybe there was something, like, he wasn't happy about. So, I don't know, you know what he's like, punk. Yeah, perfectionist. Um, but I thought the ending was nice, you know, um, in, in the whole uh, countering of the, you know, the gts and stuff um, into the Skywalker's move. But, yeah, man, that was, that was a, a nice little match. Um, I thought so, anyway. Let's go on to segment three, uh, which was Ziggler versus Axel. Uh, before the match, we had Steph come out, though, and announced Orton versus Cena for the Rumble. Uh, Shooks, why are we getting this, you know, same predictable rubbish again? Um, well, what else are they going to do? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't think enough has gone on. There's too many storylines crossing over, so, you know, this is this is all we've got, really. At the moment, you know, like, Batista's not back yet. Um, you've got Ambrose, you've got the Shield breakup, which is one thing... Um, <coughs> You've got Daniel Bryan um, in a program with the Wyatt family. So then, who is there that's actually been challenging Orton? Nobody. <laughs> so this this is all that's left, really. Yeah. Um, also, did you see um, on uh, you know the little promo package they did on Randy Orton? They edited out nicely Chris Benoit. <laughs> did, you, did you manage to see that? Like. Because obviously we know Summer Sound 2004, Randy Orton didn't beat just nobody. He beat Benoit, and yeah, that was nicely edited. I think that um, they've shown that bit before, so they just show him where he's just sitting up, where his like sort of elbow pads coming off. Mm. But they don't show who he's in the ring with or what's happened. He's just yeah, he just sort of magically won it against nobody. So seeing that Orton, you know, versus Cena again at the Rumble, is it safe to say Cena won't be in the Rumble then, Steve? Um, I don't, I'm not sure. I mean, we've seen it before, haven't we? Mm-hmm. We've seen um, like uh, number one contenders to world to world titles coming in the um, coming as a rumble. So you, you never know. You never know who's going to show up for the rumble. You, that's that's the thing I love about it. <laughs> I'm excited, man. I can't. I cannot wait. Love the rumble. I cannot wait. Um. So all right. So let's actually get to the match. <laughs> Ziggler actually got a clean win. You know what I mean on Raw. What happened there, Steve? <laughs> Yeah, um, he hasn't had many wins, has he? Um, personally, I don't, I don't see Dolph doing much um, for the in 2014. Since the uh, titles have been merged now, it's going to be much harder for the sort of like lower level main eventers to to get the title back. I think people like Del Rio, um, Ziggler, maybe Shane, well, Sheamus when he comes back. I can't see them getting much of a look in at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, Dolph is more like a guy that he can just make people look good, and um, if you want, if you want. To put um, someone to put put a main eventer over and make them look look decent, and then you go to Ziggler. 
or there's um, talks at the moment, apparently in the dirt sheet, saying that Ziggler is meant to beat Dean Ambrose for the um, you know, United States title, and then is meant to be facing Sheamus at Mania for the title. What, Sheamus for the um, US title? Yeah. That's a bit of a strange one. I, I know. know he's not... He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's above US title sort of level, but he's not really in the same sort of league as the scene as the Ortons and the Punks and um, all that lot. So it's a strange one, that one. It'll be interesting to see where that goes. Yeah, I know. Um, especially with Seamus coming back and stuff, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, this goes on to the next segment because we're going to talk about IC title, um, you know, and the merger. <laughs> merger. Segment four was Big E versus Fandango. Now, um, Shugs, you know, now this is how you book an IC title match, don't you think? Like, how, were you surprised how long they got? And also, you know, in this match, like, that this match was so competitive. Um, I think it was good for uh, Fandango, especially, because obviously um, Big E Langston's been book strong for like the last few weeks and maybe months you know like he's on the upward but like Fandango one week he's wrestling Great Cali and you know he could be wrestling anyone so I think it was really good for him because he's not actually as bad as we remember him being you know and obviously since Wrestlemania we're almost like you know 10 months you know 9 months away from res- from last Wrestlemania when he made his first match so obviously he's had a lot of wrestling missed time with his um um, concussion and stuff, but he's actually quite good now. So you know, he's it wouldn't be too far fetched for him to be intercontinental champion. I think that's what he actually needs now, something like that to maybe see if he's better than the mid card. Yeah, um, Biggie for me, man, he's starting to step up really nicely performing, Steve. Um, <coughs> like some good moves. Um, you know, the oh, the belly to belly from the outside, inside, and. He's just showing some different, um, for a big guy, he's showing different moves, you know. Um, don't you agree? He's already had a more interesting reign than old um, Dry Lunch, hasn't he? <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Gosh, anybody it's, could. It's, it's, it's just the way he's looked. I mean, he's been um, hanging with, yeah, he tagged with Cena a few weeks ago. He's been defending the title. He's having good, solid matches. And, um, yeah, let's, let's hope it continues. Let's hope it does indeed. Now, finally, Shugs, King, this moron mentions UFC right on the air okay so you mentioned <coughs> you know Anderson Silva's leg break and stuff talking about Big E the guy is talking like he actually watched like he actually watched UFC he didn't watch shit he just mentioned he just casually just puts in there oh yeah you know Anderson oh um Big E's like his leg wouldn't break like Anderson Silva the fuck do you know about UFC dog I don't think <laughs> King doesn't watch anything <laughs> He doesn't even watch That's, his own programming. No, no, no. He doesn't even watch... Yeah, he doesn't even watch WWE TV. So, obviously, we all know that he maybe saw the video or he heard about it, but that's it, you know? Um, do you reckon he um, he was allowed to do that? Mention UFC oh, there? yeah. JBL always does it, you know? they Whatever's, like, pop culture or whatever's in the news, they're always allowed to um, mention it. Okay. Um, right. Let's go on to second five. Bad... New Barrett, all right. Bad, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Bad news, Barrett. Right. Segment starts off random with some random undercard fucking carny fools. How bad out. would this party be if you were stuck on New Year's with all these fucking losers? <laughs> not even that, sure, yeah. Not even that. It's just the fact that you know if you're standing in this group, you better be worried about where you're gonna be in 2014. Because they ain't got shit for you. And I was worried for Ziggler because he was standing up in there with a suit like, you know, yeah, party with Booker T. What the fuck? <laughs> Booker T's not even got a job. What's he doing there? Well, since he's, yeah, he's been sacked, but he's on TV every week and he's always on the Legends panel. <laughs> oh, <coughs> God, right. So then Wade Barrett comes out, yeah? So now it's time to play my motherfucking music. <laughs> What the fuck are you trying to do to these British guys? What are you doing? This guy can talk. This guy can wrestle, okay? You was going to give him a big push. He got injured. So instead of helping him, you know, um, rehabilitate himself and then maybe get a little push, you give him this stupid ass gimmick. Like all Britons do is give bloody bad news. 
what is wrong with you? You can't keep doing this shit. Like, you've got fucking Seamus doing some 08100 fella shit. <laughs> and now you're giving us bad news Barrett. Is that as good as we are? Bad news Barrett. Fuck you, man. And Michael Cole. Michael Cole, yeah? Stop telling us how to download the app. We're not old age pensioners. We know how to work our phones. We know how to use the app. Okay? We know how to use the Play Store. We know how to use the iTunes, whatever store it is. Stop it. Fuck it. Like, we don't need to give, like, three different separate segments about how to download the app. You know? Most people download the app, see how shit it is, and uninstall it straight away. Come on. And you know what? Last thing. If you're going to book other Raw stars at another event, yeah, make sure the top ones are actually on TV. All right? Make sure that... What the hell is going on? You've got bloody Cena, Orton, Cesaro, the tag team champions. What? What's going on? Come on now, man. Raw wasn't that bad, yeah? But it could have been a lot better. You announced Cena versus Orton in Royal Rumble, and those dudes ain't even on the show. Rant done. Um, do you know what? I thought it was a nice change. <laughs> <laughs> to not not to like squash the rant, but um, you know I didn't really I didn't notice they weren't on there. You know what I mean? Uh, they showed the autumn promo, which was really really good. Um, you know, like all the production values, but I didn't miss it. I know that for one thing. Oh fuck that dude! Hulk Hogan, we coming for you, nigga! Yeah. Fuck that dude, like. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't miss him one bit. You know what I mean? Mm. So. It wasn't that it wasn't that bad, but yeah, I agree with you. You know, I don't know how they managed to book um, a big house show and um, Raw on the same night, but you know, like keep Kofi and Miz over there. Yeah, man, that's blessed. Keep Kofi and Miz over there. Kick them over there. You know what I mean? But oh, jeez. Anywho, um, let's just go on to segment. Sorry for my constant bad language, but rants get heated sometimes. You know what I mean? <coughs> Odd words pop out. It's all good. Segment six, Sandow versus Kali. It might be the first actual racial slur we've had on, <laughs> on the show. <laughs> <laughs> what, Shugs? It's, it's down to you, player. You're editing. I'm yeah? editing. I'm going on it. I'm amplifying that shit. <laughs> I'm putting you on blast. Oh, my God. Oh, next minute you see me on Twitter like this dude. Like <laughs> yeah. This picture like this dude getting bulk at it. <laughs> oh, God. Um, uh, anyway. Segment six, Sandow versus Kali. Interactive vote to face Sandow. And Kali wins, okay, out of Miz and Kofi. So, Steve, what the hell does that say about Kofi and Miz? <laughs> um, oh dear, poor old Kofi. Poor old Kofi is all I can say. Um, I think it just shows that um, the WWE app isn't, the, isn't something used by a lot of the um by a lot of the kids because obviously Kofi's but really over with the kids. He does well with um, the the youngsters and um he's put up against Carly and no one votes for him. Well, only about twenty percent or something or whatever, whatever whatever it was, but yeah, I just I think the WWF is something that the more sort of like teenage and um grown up WWE fans use and I think that it, it's it was Carly just Everyone thought, oh, let's just vote Carly for a laugh. <laughs> well, I was definitely laughing. <laughs> the match, you know, the match was it, what it was. Um, so, uh, Shugs, obviously this match was filler, yeah, but, like, would filler matches be a lot better if they put, like, a match with two people that had some kind of chemistry? <coughs> um, you know, it's just, it's just shit, like, <laughs> what can I say, you know? What can I say? Shit. Speechless. <laughs> so Shit. <laughs> you know? Uh, From like, uh, the, the way they have King stopping the show to announce all these votes and, you know, uh, it's just shit. <laughs> oh, God. Um, I, I really hope, okay, that, you know, in the coming months with the excitement of Royal Rumble, Elimination Chamber and WrestleMania that, you know, our shows will be you know, some positive stuff, because lately all we've been doing is cussing, <laughs> and it is funny, 
But, you know, we want to promote good stuff. We want to make sure that we are talking about some good stuff on Raw. You know, like when Mark Henry did his whole retirement thing, that, uh, that episode of Sunday Segway was awesome. Please check it out on, um, I, on iTunes and YouTube. Um, slight plug there. So let's go on to segment seven. Okay, Brodus versus the pushback. <coughs> Our truth. You right there, Steve? You right, mate? Yeah, I'm fine. All right, cool. Um, <laughs> why are these two still feuding, um, shugs over entrance music? You know, that only gets played like five times out of the year on Raw. Mate, it's not these two that's worrying me. It's this fucking Xavier Woods. <laughs> he's like the new Kofi. He's Kofi 2K14 because he is just, he's just bland. And his voice is so annoying. <laughs> Don't you find that he's just like, eh, and he's just like, ah. Oh. When he was on commentary, I'm just like, fast forwarding. I don't want to hear this guy, you know. <laughs> and obviously, the finish was like botched, or something happened to um, our truth when he done it. He hit himself doing his own finisher, and then he couldn't dance at the end. <laughs> They were all dancing, and Archie was just holding his back, just like fist pumping. <laughs> That's a super botchamania. You know something's wrong when you've got the pushback fist pumping and not doing his little jiving, gen- like, you know, gyrating business. Oh, jeez. Or well, Xavier Woods, I mean, they, they have just pushed this guy under the bus. Like, they have literally, like, what, you know, he's, he could have an actually all right gimmick if he was on his own, but they decided to pair him up with someone else. Someone else who isn't doing too good. And it just means you're not doing too good either. It just don't make any sense. Um, Steve, how can they make us kind of care a bit more about a heel builder's clay? Um, not having lose his first match since his heel turn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man, I was so shocked. I'm broke to win this, and then Truth wins. And surely wrestling booking first rule, one of the first rules should be if you turn someone either face to heel or heel to face, give them a few wins to make the make the fans care about them. Why should the fans care about Brodus Clay now that he's lost a bloody R True? <laughs> exactly ridiculous. So let's move on from this and let's go on to the most talked about probably you know, segment on Raw, um the Brock Lesnar return. Shugs, how happy were you to see um Paul Heyman? Oh yeah. Um that I'm more happy to see Heyman than I was to see Brock Lesnar, you know? And I just thought, as always, Heyman was just, you know, amazing. Um, gets on the mic, and he just he speaks sense, you know? That's it. He doesn't need to come up with some bullshit or, you know, repeat himself and say the same old things. He just speaks sense. <laughs> He's the one. He is the one that makes us smile right now with his promos and stuff. Um... But Heyman says, Steve, that Brock Lesnar will challenge the winner of Orton and Cena. You know, will this actually happen, and are you interested? <sighs> to be honest, I'm more interested in sort of like special attraction matches with Brock. I'm not really interested in um, having him um, having him wear the title. I mean, when, when Rock came back, he won the title, and look, and look what happened there. It was just awful. I'd rather have a full-timer as, as champ, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree, I agree. So, um, Mark Henry comes out, you know, gets speared through the barricade, takes an F5 shugs, and then Brock decides to let out two screams that make him <laughs> sound like a schoolgirl bitch. Like, <laughs> it's just like, like a banshee, you know, like a banshee, just like, ah! It's oh. just, for such a big guy, he's just got that voice, you know? If he was on the end of the phone saying, I'm going to come over and kick your ass, you'd be like, well, come on then. You know, you'd be giving it your address. You'd be like, you know, come and find me. And then this guy turns up and you're like, oh, shit, you know, because he's just an absolute beast. But, like, if you were just hearing his voice and you never saw him, you'd be just calling him out, you know, come. You'd be like, fuck you. This is my address. You know where I am. Come find me. And then Brock Lesnar turns up your house and you just, like, shit yourself. <laughs> Oh gosh, the, the, please put the scream in. I beg you, please put the scream in. <laughs> oh god. Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! Carry up on the You gotta be kidding me! That's 400 plus pounds! No, no, no! 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 No, no, no!
seeing as how much they're paying the guy, you just think that it might be, you know, surely they could use this match <coughs> for, for something else. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If they're paying him all this money, then they should be saving it for big stars like Triple H. Mark Henry's nowhere at the moment, so why are they wasted a big Brock Lesnar match on him? Exactly. Who could? Who else could it be a fault though? Like, uh, well, it's too quick to go straight in with Orton, mm-hmm. but I don't know. Yeah, I suppose everyone else is taken up. If you go through all like the top names, then you know there's not even any Sheamus or anyone like that. So it is going to be Mark Henry unless it was Kane or something like that, and then they'd have to create a program. So. I suppose everyone else is already taken, and maybe they want to use up all the dates if they if they're paying this money and they got these dates. Maybe they worked out, and you know they have to start using them. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so let's move on. This oh, actually, um, on there, you know, I got uh, just gonna say, obviously, people know there was a divas match on there, but I'm not gonna mention the divas. Did I see Paige? No. Did I see Emma? No. There are no divas. So let's go on to segment nine, uh, which was the final segment of Raw. Uh, Daniel Bryan goes for a gauntlet match against each of the Wyatts. Starts off against um, Skinner 2.0, Luke Harper. The gauntlet match, um, you know, what did you think of, like, Harper? Because he seems like to be really improving, Steve. Yeah, I'm a big, big fan of Harper. Um... He's, he's definitely the best in ring wise of the, of, of the um, of the family, and um, Brian and Brian and Harper have had good matches before. When when they announced this, I was really looking forward to seeing it, and it was another another good match. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I just I just like the way he kind of operates as a big man. I, yeah. I really like the way he operates as a big man. Um, he's, he's, got, he's got his character down to a T. Does really really good moves. Um, I mean he did uh, a, that power bomb man. Daniel Bryan loves that spot. He might, he might, he, he just, just better watch himself and make sure he tucks his chin in. Cause boy, if his head hits that, the straight concussion. Um, <coughs> you know, he does a nice little float of a um, uh, super X as well. That big boot and the clothesline. Oh, just the rest is history. It's just nice. Um, I thought, uh, you know, this was a nice little match. Um, Shugs, did you think it was the best? You know, maybe one of the best matches of the night. Uh, yeah, I think like we were saying, they've got good. Um chemistry um he even manages to bring good stuff out of like eric Rongen mm-hmm. um later on but yeah i think that harper and brian like work really really well together they just seem to um you know he's a good base for brian he's such a big guy and brian you know does all this high flying and fast moving stuff and eat and go as well you know um luke harper he's he doesn't seem to be blowing he doesn't seem to get gassed he just keeps going mm. pretty, and he's pretty quick for a big guy as well uh, we got uh, Daniel Bryan, you know, wins with a flying knee. Uh, then he beats Rowan with a small, uh, Ro- sorry, Rowan with a small package. Uh, and then he beats Bray Wyatt by DQ. So after, you know, a short promo by Bray Wyatt, Bryan, okay, then joins the Wyatt family, okay. What should, is your view on this final um, angle? Um, I thought they delivered it well. You know, the way it went down, whether it's the right thing or the wrong thing, but the actual way it happened, I thought was decent enough. Um, I just, I, it's like anything, you have to see where they go with it, you know? Where are they yeah. going to go with it? That's that's what I want to see. Um, but I thought the way it actually went down, if that's what they were going to do, I thought it was good, you know? The way that he joined and he still got the sister Abigail, and then, you know, they took him out and, you know, he sort of like looked at the crowd when he was in between. So yeah, I thought I thought it actually went all right. Okay. Uh, right. So, Steve, any more notes on this uh, uh, this segment? Um, I think Bray. I think the Wyatt family do well out of being associated with Brian. I think they'll do very well. I mean, um, we all know how over Brian is, and. Um, I don't, I, and also, I don't, I don't think it'll be a long term, Brian. I think he'll be back babyface by Elimination Chamber. I think maybe they might go the route of um, Brian knows that he's got no chance of defeating the machine, as they say, like the, the, the authorities. So he uses the Wyatt family to 
climb up the ladder and maybe get a title match, and then he attacks the Wyatt family and may- maybe even wins the title. You never know. You never know. Okay, that's the end of Raw, people. Um, so, Raw rating, please, Steve. <laughs> Oh, I thought, I thought it was quite a decent show. I'll go for... Oh, six months. Oh, I'll go for seven, I think. Seven. All right, Shug? Um, yeah, I'll go for seven. Um, despite, you know, the, <coughs> in inverted commas, top stars not mm-hmm. being on there, um, I didn't really notice until I listened to a uh, review of Raw and um, John Pollock talked about going to watch the show in Toronto. I didn't even realise that they weren't on there. You know, I just yeah. watched Raw and I just enjoyed it for what was what it was, and I thought it was fine. Cool. All right. So that's it. So now we're going to go into fan feedback. Um, so Shugs again forgot to put out the you know the link, but it's okay because our wonderful seg heads have taken it upon themselves to go on the message board and write their own stuff, which is good. They don't need the link. They could do what they want to do. So it's all good. Um, right. So, let's, I'll start off, Shugs, um, because I have Brendan's up here, and then you can read out the rest, all right? All right. Well, this one, it's, one, it's on, it's on our email. It's on our email. Yeah, yeah, I got, I got the email. Okay. Um, Kylie B's is on there. Uh, and. It's only that one, isn't it? Uh, no, and, um, James is on there as well. Um, I should be on his, e- on, on the email. All right, so I'll read out, anyway, I'll read out Brendan. So, Brendan Finney, our nice tech head from the States. Um, all right, he says, I worked out how to create my own thread, people. <laughs> so, um, Punk gets a great promo about, uh, cuts a great promo about uh, his year in the WWE. Punk versus Rawlins, good solid match. Showed Rawlins can go with the best. And the problems of the Shield seem to be coming out again. If and when the Shield split, uh, I think Ambrose will get one uh, that will, will be the one that will suffer. Curtis Axel versus Dolph Ziggler. Uh, good God, Ziggler is having to wrestle Alex, uh, sorry, Axel. I guess he won't be getting a run anytime soon. Biggie Langston versus Fandango. Fandango puts on a better showing than I expected, but I think that it is to say uh, that Summer Rae will wear gold before him. Bad News Barrett slash New Year celebration. The only bad news is that his character is killing Barrett. This character is killing Barrett. I agree with you, Brendan. Damien Sandow versus the Great Kali. Sandow puts in a five-minute segment filler match where it puts over he can he can't sorry he can't even beat the Great Kali without cheating. What are WWE doing? Brodus Clay versus the Pushback. Our truth is this going anywhere? It seems it's more about the girls. Than a heel turn by Brothers. Eva Marie, the Bellas, Cameron, and Naomi versus Oksana, Rosa, Caitlin, Summer Rae, and Alicia Fox. No comment. Thank you. <laughs> Daniel Bryan versus Luke Harper. Daniel Bryan versus Eric Rowan. Daniel Bryan versus The Wyatts. Good long first match uh, went as I expected. Great hits taken by both stars. Really sold the match well. Second match was quick, uh, but it was Rowan. So what do you expect? Third match versus Bray Wyatt. Didn't get started. Uh, I had been expecting something to happen with Brian, uh, sorry, uh, with Brian, as uh, they had been showing uh, VT all night, but I didn't expect that. Be interested to see where the story goes with Brian. Rule rating is 5 out of 10. Thank you. Brayden, nice one. Shugs. Um, so this is uh, James Powers, our new um, forum moderator. He hasn't accepted the post, but he's just been giving it, so <laughs> tough shit, that's what happens to me. Um, so, Punk uh, noted it's the last Raw of 2013, um, and he started the year off as a long way as champion, and he went through his year. Um, CM Punk did a good um, way of stirring the dissension in the Shield um, by pitting them against each other, um, and then talked about Brad Maddox. Um, CM Punk defeated Rawlins, he said, in 17, me- 17 minutes, 45 seconds. Uh, what we saw, the match was really good. As much as I hate the idea of the Shield seemingly splitting up, I'm enjoying the build-up to it. Um, <coughs> he didn't see that one coming uh, when he says about um, Orton, Stefan Ames in the Orton, seeing a match, James just thought, gee, we didn't see that coming. Um, Ziggler. 
and Curtis Axel, a huge win for Ziggler. What is JBL smoking? Huge win, <laughs> really. Um, um, and another talks about the app tutorial, a bit like Kinney's fed up with the app tutorials. Um, trying to get the second page now of these notes, because uh huh. Um, Eva Marie, the Bella twins, and all that. Enough with the pointless diva shit already. The show's ending for fuck's sake. <laughs> Um, solid fact that Hab was close to beating Brian. Um, I'm trying to get them more thoughts instead of reviews. Um, Daniel Bryan against the Wyatts. Um, I must say I never saw that one come in. Brian joining the Wyatt family. Is he now a heel? Question mark. Raw rating, even with the epic last eight minutes of Raw. And after I gave, um, gave it a miserable five out of ten, most of the big name players uh, were at the WWE live event in Canada and not at Raw. So he wasn't happy as well. It looks like he missed Cena as well <laughs> as well as you did. <laughs> say say he missed Randy Orton. That that will definitely give us a, a little rant. <laughs> oh good. All right. So have we got uh, have we got a another one? Um, did you do the Kylie B or no no, no? Kylie B's on the email. Right. I can't I can't look at it because oh well, you know why. Okay so um, Kylie B. Um, due to American Dad recording out of nowhere and not realising for about nine minutes I missed the start of Raw but uh, <laughs> it was announced by Brad Maddox who's going to be CM Punk versus Seth Rollins I enjoy watching both guys in the ring um, the spans back to R of H and Wrestling Society X so it's a treat for me um, good match to see from uh, R of H guys I'm hoping at some point WWE does another one with Punk and Rollins at the pay-per-view once the Shield is done I enjoyed the technical side of the match. It's hard to learn correctly, and arms and legs going everywhere, and it just shows how well trained and talented they are. I won't comment on the Royal Rumble meal event because it's been there, seen, bought the T-shirt moment. Okay, so I need to buy the TV. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> Axel Ziggler. Anytime Ziggler comes out, it's a great thing. Not only because of the Ziggler wiggle, um, but because of his charisma and mad bumps. Good is Axel. I like him to a point as he is quite poor enough after a while. It was a good match, but uh, most of the time the Cray was dead, which was Dana, but I'm very happy Dolph won, as he's been on a weird line, and I hope 2014 is better. Fandango Big E, such a fan of Fandango, and of course Summer Rae, uh, those fans that, um, she's been a fan since he was Johnny Curtis, um, and even better, Dirty Curty, so I'm happy <laughs> he got a title shot. Um, Big E, I don't seem to like the power house for some reasons, but that's just me. Um, my Twitter feed was mostly about Summer Rae's dress, so I won't say anything about that. Um, the New Year's party, I saw Alex Riley and Justin Gabriel, which made me smile a little bit. Other than that, I couldn't really be bothered with the newest Spinner Rousey. Thank, thank you, Wade Barrett, for saving it and being risen up for the grain, but it certainly wasn't bad news. Um, WW app doesn't work for me. The app store votes are rigged. I'm not really bothered about this match. Any kind of match with Cali is one that makes me go and get something to eat. Um, Brothers Clay against R-Truth I adore Xavier Woods He works harder uh, than anyone Who watched him in TNA will know that Again the crowd was dead I mean it was, really wasn't worth watching Triple H announcement um, Thanks to Stephanie Tweeting minutes before Triple H announcement I wasn't really shocked about this return um, I think Eamon should only talk from now on um, Because um, Lesnar's voice is just terrible <laughs> so I beat down on Henry by Brock, but sorry, I was like a child laughing at Brock's um, girly scream. The Diva match was abysmal. Um, uh, last week's match was abysmal, but this one was somewhat watchable. Even me as somebody, I just want to slap. Um, Don't we all, mate? And Daniel Bryan against the White Family. I like all these guys. Daniel has great matches. You can tell the crowd only came to see CM Punk and Daniel Bryan because they were seriously... The only time um, the crowd came alive. Um, Bray's a freaky guy, and he makes it awesome. I don't even know what <laughs> Daniel Bryan joining them, as I want as I want to know what actually happened. Um, it's going to be interesting to see. Okay, and at Kylie B nineteen, go girl. Thanks. She come at us, man. Kylie B. Shout out to Kylie B. What are you saying, girl? Thanks for doing um, you know the review. But people out there. Just make sure you keep putting your thoughts. Um, it's okay. You don't have to write a, you know, a long review. Just keep it nice and short. 
uh, yeah, just give us a nice short uh, thought, and uh, we'll make sure we read it out. So, um, I'm going to go to a break now. I'm going to make sure Steve can drop, uh, grab a drink, you know, clear his throat. He's got a little bit of a cough. Uh, and we'll be back with SmackDown in 60 seconds. Shook Stunners, very special Beat the Clock Challenge, Kenny Killer versus Steve Dawson. Um, and then in the words of, so don't you miss it. <coughs> Be sure to listen to the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast. What? What? Every Sunday with Kenny Killer and the Gowden Sugar Shoes. Yes! Yes! With all the news, views, and laughter that you want. They like jet airplanes. They like long limousines. Every Sunday, the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast on Podomatic, iTunes, and YouTube. So why don't you choke on that, slap nut? Hello everyone, welcome back to the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast. It is Ikeny Killer, joined by the Garden Sugar Shugs and the master of the top rope elbow, Steve Dawson. So, we're going to go into Smackdown in 60 seconds, so roll with it, Shugs. Okay, so, uh, Smackdown, start off, Shield promo, um, Ambrose is great in the ring, talking about it, and then we get um, Ambrose on commentary, and Reigns and Rollins against the Usos. Um, Shield, all three members attack the Usos, give them a beat down, Punk comes out and clears the ring, Vicky Guerrero comes out, and in the ad break she makes the main event, Shield uh, against Usos and Punk. Fandango, R-Truth. Xavier Woods on commentary, um, he gets absolutely ripped by JBL, um, fuck Xavier Woods, distraction from the Punk of Axel, Adrian wins, um, Raw exclusive, Axel against Ziggler from Monday night, why would they repeat this bullshit, um, we get the Rhodes Dynasty against the Wyatts, no Bray, he's not in his rocking chair, he doesn't turn up, um, the Wyatts absolutely beat down the Rhodes, all through the match, and then the Rhodes get the win at the end. Um, Nikki Bella, the Axana, what the fuck? Um, Axel against Big E, even for SmackDown, Craig is dead, and Big E just crushes him. Um, get a hate <coughs> <laughs> a an interview Sorry. from um, WWE.com, and he just talks about why Brock came back. We get Bad News Barrett again on the podium. Um, just some bullshit. Punk and the Usos against the Shield. Back and forth match. We know how well the Shield and the Usos do. We get a few bits of vintage Punk caused by um, Michael Cole. Then we get uh, a GTS on Ambrose for the win. And then the show finishes with a new Wyatt promo where he's in the, the barn and the rocket chair is there. And I'm sure you can hear bits of Daniel Bryan's voice. And um, he's just talking about Bryan. Fade to black. Fade to black. Okay. First Shug Stunners of 2014. So, give it to us, Shugs. <laughs> Jobber of the week. Well, I'm going to give it to Fandango because we built him up on Raw. He was looking good on Raw, and then SmackDown he goes and he loses to the pushback. <laughs> you know, so either he's getting pushed. This is what I said last week. You win on Raw, you lose on SmackDown. So only a few of the chosen ones get to like win on both shows. But most weeks, for most people, even the tag team champs, if they win on Raw, they lose on SmackDown, you know? It's fucking bullshit. Um, move of the week. Was there any good moves, really, on... Uh, oh, well, the Brock Lesnar F5 on... on yeah, TV. that's it. Brock Lesnar F5 on Mark Henry, because just to pick Mark Henry up, and I suppose he delivered a pretty good... Um, F5, you know, was pretty good. And and then the rest of the week, um, and it Big E Langston, I don't know. Big E. Take Big it down e. again. Big fucking E. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right, people. Before we go into Beat the Clock, I just want to note down and just say a couple of um, 
NXT notes, you know, in 2013, key stats about WWE. So, John Cena's average match length, okay? In 23 single matches, John Cena's average match length is 15 minutes and 24 seconds, all right? Um, number of days Dean Ambrose has held the U.S. title for in 2013 is 226, and he is the longest reigning uh, title reign in 2014. AJ has 198 in 2013. Curtis Axel 155. Shield 148. John Cena 133, as the same as Alberto Del Rio 133. And there's been 11 matches between Dolph Ziggler and Alberto Del Rio on WWE television in 2013. What you know about that? Right. So it is now time for Beat the Clock Challenge, myself versus Steve Dawson. This is the top of the top <coughs> match. Okay. I'm excited because I know a lot. So does Steve. Shugs is the, Shugs is the, is the quiz master. Thanks to James Pirates for giving us uh, the questions and the answers. All right. So who's going first? You're going first. Me? Oh, yep. geez. All right. Cool. Because you're, you're a fucking sheep. <laughs> Alright, um, so, you ready? I'm ready. Okay, so three, two, one, go. <laughs> Edge won the 2007 Money in a Bank ladder match. Who did he cash in the briefcase against? Oh, uh, John Cena. No. Nope. Uh, Undertaker. Uh, at what pay-per-view did the first Elimination Chamber match take place? Uh, Survivor Series. What year? 2002. Yep. Yeah. What year did WWE stop doing in your house pay per views? Oh, geez, uh, 2002. No. Nope. Oh, uh, 99. 99, yep. <laughs> Who did Lita debut as the girlfriend of? S.A. Rios. Yep. <laughs> Why was Bret Hart pissed at the 1997 Royal Rumble? Oh, geez. Oh, because Austin came in and checked him out. Yep. <laughs> Who was the first Divas, WWE Divas champion? Michelle McCool. Yep. <laughs> What year did we see the first Money in the Bank ladder match? Oh, 2006. No. Oh, uh, 2007. No. Oh, oh, jeez. Um, 2000. Ooh, 2005. So, Steve, we ready? I'm ready. You are ready. Okay, so, three, two, one, go. (laughs) CM Punk won the 2009 Money in the Bank match. Who did he cash in the briefcase against? Oh, Batista? No. Oh, oh, God. Um, pass. Okay, at what pay-per-view did we see the first Hell in a Cell match? Oh, um, Bad Blood. Bad Blood, what year? Uh, 97. 97, good lad. Uh, When was the first, when was the last time WWE was held a regular pay-per-view in the UK? Ooh, um, 2004? Nope. 2002? Um, no. 2003? No. Oh, Paula. Who was Santino Morella's first girlfriend? First girlfriend? Oh, Beth Phoenix? No. Oh, God. Um, oh, pass. Which which on-screen official ordered 1996 WrestleMania 12 main event to continue? That's time. Um, Oh, um, I started, I started, so I'll finish. So you can answer (laughs) the question. Um, oh, heaven, it's not, is it? No. No. So. I don't know, pass. It was, um. Oh, it was, it was Gorilla Monsoon. Gorilla Monsoon, wasn't it? Yeah. Yep. So, you've got, um, one. Oh. One. How many did I get? One. One. Yeah. I thought he got more than that. Well, no. The first one he didn't get right. It was Jeff Hardy. Yep, that's right. Yeah. Um, <sighs> he said bad blood. You got that right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then the next question was, well, a uh, uh, regular pay per view held in the UK. And was didn't that, get that. Was, was that interaction? No, it was SummerSlam 1992. What regular? What did you say? Regular pay per view? Yeah, because I thought you, I thought you meant the, um, the, the UK exclusive ones. Yeah. I, I, uh, no. Because they're UK exclusive, so they're not regular pay-per-views. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I know, yeah. And the first girlfriend was Maria Canales. Oh, I don't remember that at all. Uh, um, so, uh, you got, Und- Kenny, you got Undertaker, that's one, Survivor Series, that's two, In Your House. Mm-hmm. You got that right? Yeah. Three, Lita, four, mm-hmm. Bret Hart, five, Maksha McCool, six. And the first Money in the Bank ladder match was 2005. 2005? That yeah. was RVD won that, didn't he? 
Yeah, so you got yeah. six. So six oh, one. I, I would have got loads of these questions. It's just it was like it's like Man City Spurs all over again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did say you know who wants to go first, and then you then Shogi goes. Yeah, Kenny, you go first. Did he label them my questions? No, nah, just, just question, question question set one and question set two. Okay. Um, I, I think I might have got six on the others anyway. Maybe. Uh, maybe. Sure, man. <laughs> uh, you know what? That was all right. I put that down. That was well okay. played. That was all right. Anyone out there, if you want to challenge any of us, please tweet, <coughs> email in, because we're ready. We always ready. That's right. Okay. So that's the end of the show, people. That is the end of the show. Um, Steve, he makes his return. He is ill. That's when you know he's too legit to quit. He makes his return. <laughs> um, brother, you're back. You're back. You know what I mean? The cousin of the Sunday Segway is back. You are definitely going to be a big time player in the Sunday Segway this year. Um, yeah, thanks for coming on. Um, you'll be on again in a couple of weeks, right? It's good to be back. I'm all, all, always ready to come on. Wicked, wicked. Um, obviously, you know, 2014 is going to be a big year for me and the Gallum Sugar Shugs. Cannot do it without this geezer. So, um, Frank Shugs? Uh, no problem. No problem. Um, what's your thoughts on 2014 for us, player? Um, just keep getting those followers. Keep getting those. I think 2014, we want to know. We want to get more feedback. We want to know who's listening, who you are. You know, so holler at us. Don't just listen. Take part. Heard it from Shugs. There you go. Right. So, in the words of this week, it's going to be in the words of Bob Backlund at <laughs> Survival Series '94, just after he beat Bret Hart. So here we go. In the words. Of Bob so I am standing with Bob Backlund. He did exactly what he said he was going to do. Agree or disagree with his tactics. He is now two-time WWE champion. Wait, wait, wait. First of all, young man, it's Mr. Bob Backlund. And you're incorrect. I've been the champion since 1978. I never lost the championship. Tonight, I just regained the belt. I beat the man that represents your society. I beat him so I can save you. I'm going to scrutinize you to the fullest, pasteurize you, homogenize you, and synchronize you back into morality. You understand, ladies and gentlemen, it's sports education. I'm your champion. I will take on anybody, anybody at all, ladies and gentlemen. In your generation, because I'm fighting for something that means more than anything in the world has put morality back into your lives. Now your children have somebody that they can emulate after, try to catch up to, because I feel like God, and you can choke on that flat nuts. Woo! <laughs> Gotta love a bit of Backlund. Gotta love a little bit of that crazy fool, man. Alright, the end of the show. First show, 2014. Good oh, shit, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Good stuff. Right, uh, oh, alright. So, um, yeah, Shugs, what are you gonna do? You're gonna edit out the, you know, the little N-word? I kind of nah, just, nah. Oh, Shugs, I, I, I bet. I bet. That's uh, a four. That's it's, it's true. Coming out, it took forty-one shows. We're getting the real hood rats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. All right, all right. Do what you must. Do what you must. If I blow up, I blow up. I don't give a damn anyway. <laughs> all right. Um. Yeah. Steve, man. Thanks, man. Um. That's all right. It's good I, to be back. I got you penciled in, but I can't remember when. I got to look at my diary, man. I got I got us everyone penciled in to at least That's mid fine. like just, yeah, mid just, February. Yeah, just yeah, just drop me a message on Twitter. Let me know when you need me. All right, cool. Um, okay. All right, man. Well, I'll let you go.